Okay, uh, this is a video about phonetic transcription. I'm not going to review a lot of the basics here. I'm assuming you've covered them and can already do what we call transcription by trans that's transcribing a particular language based on your knowledge, say from an introductory linguistics course of that language's sound patterns and how they relate, if at all, to its writing system. Uh, one of the goals of transcription is to capture variation though. How do I pronounce a particular word differently from you? How does it come out differently in this context than that context? Or just how do I say it differently from moment to moment? Um, that sort of thing. And transcription by rule can't really help us discover that because it isn't going purely from how the speech is produced. It's filtering it through pre-existing phonological knowledge. So my goal in this course and with this video uh, is to help you move from transcription by rule to transcription by ear uh, with a little help from some audio technology. So we'll be looking at some basic techniques to help you determine a transcription or come up with a transcription for a short recording in, an, in a language that's new to you. So uh, here, just for uh, heads up, is the utterance that we'll be, uh, I'll be using as an example here. All right, and the, there's going to be a link to that, uh, where I got that from, in the video description. Now, unless you're already a speaker of Nakoda, this is the language of a handful of indigenous communities in Alberta, that probably sounds a bit overwhelming when you try to think about transcribing it. Um, now, first of all, uh, we're doing phonetics here, so I'm only going to be walking you through the sounds, uh, nothing else. I encourage you to check out the conversational Nakota radio show that I got that from if you want to learn more about the language and the communities that speak it and all of that. Um, so how do you take a passage like that and start transcribing it? We're going to break the process down into some much more manageable steps. First, let's think about it in terms of how you would do transcription by rule. If you had a passage in English, say, you might start by writing out the words orthographically, or you may already have them in front of you. Uh, using, that's using the normal spelling of the language. Uh, then you could step through the words one at a time, using your phonetic knowledge to identify the symbol for, say, the th sound, and your phonological knowledge to determine where there's aspiration, where there's nasalization, and so forth. Here, you don't know the words, so you can't spell them out. And you probably don't have that phonological knowledge to know what to expect even if you could in terms of the finer detail. But you can step through the sounds in small groups. And to do this, I recommend uh, an audio program such as Audacity. Now, this here, you see Audacity. Uh, you can get that for free. Uh, that's not it. That, that's Sorry, that's actually the, the website that I got the sound from. Uh, CJWE FM in Calgary. Um, this is the Audacity website. You can get Audacity for free uh, and it is a really powerful tool, uh, open source. Uh, you can use any other audio program you like. Uh, the main thing we want is to be able to isolate and play individual parts of the sound and sort of keep track of it that way. So like, like so, uh, right? <clears throat> um, so once you have it installed, find a bit of speech that you want to transcribe, load it into Audacity, um, like this. And, uh, and we're going to start going through it a bit at a time. But even that little bit, uh, you may not uh, quite be ready to transcribe that. It's still a, a fair bit. So... The language you're called on to transcribe may only have sounds that you already know from the language you first learned to transcribe, but you don't necessarily know that going in. So the next potentially daunting task is to figure out what sounds you're actually hearing. Now, ultimately, it's going to be your ear that guides you. Uh, much of transcription training is really just a way to train your ear to recognize more sounds more quickly uh, and to recognize more subtle differences between sounds that you're already familiar with. Um, and for this part of the training, I recommend uh, deploying a talking IP chart. So let's see what we have here. Uh, there's Audacity. Here's a talking IP chart. I like this one hosted at the University of Victoria. There's plenty of others. Uh, and you'll see 
at first glance, it looks just like a regular IPA chart, laid out just like the IPA chart that you have. Uh, but if I click on something, it's not going to play it for me. Da, a da. Ah, just a bit of delay. Uh, na, a na. Okay, so it takes a minute for the player to first load. Um, you hear samples of the sounds. The consonants are always put next to vowels, uh, and we'll learn. You'll learn in when you learn about speech perception. You'll learn why that is. Mm. Oh, the vowels are put on their own. Um, so you can click on any symbol and hear a sample of the sound it represents. And this is a great way to calibrate your perception of unfamiliar sounds, even of familiar sounds, uh, and, and connect them to the symbols of the IPA. <clears throat> so one note of caution that I'd like to give you is that um, <clears throat> most, uh, most of these talking IPA charts give samples from one or maybe two speakers, but every speaker you come across is slightly different. And for many of the speech sounds, you may have a, a symbol for this sound and a symbol for this sound, but there's a lot of in-between positions that the tongue can take in producing sounds. So um, I want to warn you against spending too much time forcing the sounds you hear to fit exactly to the sounds in the talking IPA chart. Uh, if you have a source of linguistic information that gives the phonemes and ideally also the allophones uh, used in a language, stick to those symbols for the most part. Don't diverge from them unless you have a really good reason. You're really sure this speaker is using some other sound entirely. <clears throat> okay, so now I can listen to the sounds and I can identify them with this reference point. How do I type them? Uh, as a phonetician, there are two main methods that I like, uh, which I use interchangeably depending on uh, the needs of the moment. One is an online keyboard, and I like the Type It keyboard uh, shown here. Um, so online keyboards, basically, they give you a list of symbols. You click on a symbol, and it shows up in a, a text box. And you can have, you can throw a bunch of them together. I can actually type from my keyboard the, the letters that I have on the keyboard. I can put a letter and then a uh, diacritic. Right, and it combines them automatically. It's really handy for, for that sort of stuff. Um, the other method is to use the insert character function in a word processor. So in Google Docs, for example, uh, you can use uh, insert special characters. Uh, and then instead of symbols, I want whoops, Latin scripts. And it's not the common Latin, but there's an actual section for phonetics. So they have collected all of the symbols and the diacritics from the IPA here. And I can click on these, and you see they show up in my transcription. And uh, diacritics, it can be a bit small, uh, but when you scroll over, you can see the bigger version. So I can add diacritics, uh, just like with the uh, Type It resource. <clears throat> okay, so that's uh, I find that really useful. Uh, depending on what I'm doing, if I'm already wor working in Google Docs, I will tend to use that facility. Um, sometimes, if I'm, I just want to get a big transcription together, uh, even in Google Docs, I'll I'll use the Type It thing because all the symbols are are arranged a little bit more accessibly. Uh, some word processors don't really have the whole IPA or they have it, but you have to go here for some of the symbols and there for some of the symbols in their insert character interface. It can get really cumbersome. Much easier often is just to use the online keyboard, uh, build up your, your transcription, and then copy it over. Uh, you just select from in that text box, copy and paste into your word processor. So now we have all the tools we need. We can listen to small chunks of speech by selecting them in Audacity and playing. Um, and we can uh, calibrate, we can, we can test what sounds we're hearing using that talking IPA chart. And we can then type in those IPA symbols, however uh, makes most sense. Um, 
couple of final things that I'd like to suggest. Uh, first, a single sound doesn't often sound like much. And here, let's go back to our uh, Nakoda passage here. And I'm going to zoom right the heck in on uh, some sound. So let's... Uh, what do we have here? Okay, so I'm going to use uh, one of the zoom buttons to zoom in here. What's this sound like? Well, I've selected something. I'll select a bit more of it. You can almost get a bit of the S sound out of that. Uh, if I take more... Um, often the sounds don't actually get their, what you might call their identity, until they're in context. It's a little bit, I don't know, it can be a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, when you learn about the acoustics of sounds, you'll know that the acoustics of, say, a stop are often held in, in a bit of silence and then a release burst. But it also affects the sounds on either side. Vowels are often more self-contained, but even fricatives, you know, they're, they're influenced by the things on either side. Um, so it's better to take a chunk of sounds, you know, a couple syllables at least, and listen to that together and go through the sounds in it. And generally, you know, when you're at, right at the beginning of your uh, passage, don't start right when the sound the the speech starts, but start a little bit before because when you have a, a window that you're listening to, the things right at the boundaries that that cut off of you know the starting and stopping of the playing that can affect how things sound in it can distort your perception. So watch out for that. Don't transcribe things right at the edge. Move your window so the thing you're transcribing is somewhere in the middle and have this sort of moving window where you can listen to sounds in context. Just a handful of sounds, you know, like I said, a couple of syllables, and uh, you can uh, make some serious progress. Um, <clears throat> right, and second, uh, once you have the, the whole passage transcribed, listen back to the whole thing, have your transcription in front of you. Uh, it may still sound really fast, like it's hard to believe that all of that is actually in there, and, and definitely double-check it in smaller chunks uh, as you feel inclined. Uh, but it is good to get that sense of, of the work that you've done to get where you've got, get all that transcription down. It takes a lot of time. Even people who do transcription regularly over and over, you know, one minute of speech will take, can easily take an hour to transcribe. There's lots of sounds, you know, like seven or eight sounds a second, plus or minus, depending on speech rate. Uh, it's a lot of work, uh, but this is part of what we're learning in phonetics. So uh, happy transcribing and uh, good luck out there.